Welcome everyone to our first session um, our, for our first keynote. I'm Ted Laderis, and it is my pleasure to introduce our first keynote speakers, Ju Julia Stewart Landis and Allison Horst. So as founding director of OpenScapes, which was created during her Mozilla Fellowship, Julia champions kinder, better science and less time and empowers science teams with skill sets and mindsets for open reproducible research. Through her um, and through her art artwork, Allison illustrates data science concepts, our packages, functions, workflows, and mindsets to welcome and support our learners. And she was our studio's artist in residence from 2019 to 2020. So please welcome Julia and Allison. So they will be presenting a pre-recorded video. Um, but you can ask any, they'll be around um, to, so you can ask questions that you post in chat or in the ask a question link at the bottom of your Crowdcast screen. And be sure to vote on any questions you want answered there. So uh, why don't you say hi, um, Julia and Allison, and let's take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Ted, and hi, everybody. We're really excited to be here, and we will play the video. Hi, everybody. Excited to be here. Thanks, Ted and the organizers. All right, here we go. Hi, everybody. We are so excited to be here and want to thank the organizers of Cascadia R for the invitation. I'm Julie Stewart Lowndes. I'm a marine ecologist and co director of Openscapes at UC Santa Barbara. And I'm Allison Horst. I teach environmental data science at UC Santa Barbara. I'm an Openscapes champion, which you will learn more about later. And I'm also an artist. And today we're gonna to talk about open science as a movement and the art of Openscapes. So a definition of open science that really resonates with us is that it is a collaborative culture enabled by technology that empowers the open sharing of data, information and knowledge within the scientific community and the wider public to accelerate scientific research and understanding. And for us, it was really the R community and these groups here that have introduced and welcomed us to open science. For the past three years, Julie and I have been collaborating and contributing to open science through teaching and communities. And while these days we both feel like working as data scientists and teachers in R is a wonderfully supportive, collaborative and inspiring place to work, we did not always feel like this. I used to feel like this about data analysis. This is Luke Skywalker when he crashed his plane into the swamp of Dagobah, and he's here staring at a challenge he can't solve with the skill sets he has. I felt demoralized like this as a graduate student when I was first learning how to code, and again with my research team as we were struggling to code together. I felt like this in big ways, like overhauling the workflows that I developed over my whole career, and in small ways, like missing a parentheses or trying to distinguish between 10 files with files with names ending in final, final or final, final, final. So I constantly felt like I was alone or behind and it was too late, too late to catch up. I also felt like this as a PhD student and then more recently as a lecturer when I was fumbling my way through my first several years of learning and teaching R without any formal training, which is pretty common for environmental scientists. So I knew well this feeling that Julie was describing when she first brought up the idea for this Luke Skywalker analogy. Having been stuck in the swamp myself made it really easy and rewarding to capture Luke's feeling of despair in an illustration. So luckily, this isn't the end of Luke's story, because as we know, Luke meets Yoda, and Yoda uses the Force to solve Luke's problem in a way that Luke never imagined was possible. And the Force is going to open up Luke's whole world because it will solve his current challenge, but also broaden his mindset for what's possible in the future. So for me, the Force is open science. And I've met many Yodas in the R and open science communities who supported me as a new learner and helped me feel like I wasn't alone and that it wasn't too late. So my Yodas started off as people I met at my very first open science event, which was an R open sci unconference. These people were R ladies who role modeled how to support women and promote gender diversity in the R community 
as well as folks from our studio who were patient with my questions as I tried to understand how something like our markdown could be used not only for reproducibility, but for communicating science beyond my wildest dreams. And for me, meeting Julie and participating in OpenScapes has been a meeting Yoda type of experience. I was learning mostly alone and I didn't realize some of the open data science tools I was missing out on. But even more importantly, I had no idea about the R and open science communities that over the past few years have been so supportive for my own work, learning and teaching. The R and open science communities helped me work more reproducibly and collaborate better with my research team. But they also taught me that there are teams all around me. So being part of the open science movement has helped me completely reimagine how I define teams. I used to think that collaborators were limited to the people that were working on a specific project with me. But now I think of them as people who enrich my work broadly through the packages they develop or the teaching resources they share. So again, in terms of Star Wars, I think of teams as being powerful because there's so much diversity in the backgrounds and expertise and experience, and everybody can contribute in really critical ways towards a shared vision within these teams. One thing that I've learned is that even as a teacher and artist, both of which can sometimes be viewed as solo efforts, I'm always working as part of a team. I've just had to expand what I think about as a team in science to be beyond a traditional research group. My teaching assistants are part of my team, students are part of my team, and everyone who shares inspiration, ideas, and feedback in the R community is part of a team that I feel supported by. And depending on the task at hand, our roles can change widely. For example, many days, the teaching assistants are the actual Yodas, and I am just Chewbacca trying to make sure that our ship doesn't completely fall apart. Learning from communities and figuring out how to work collaborative, collaboratively with many teams has put me on a new path that has made me feel so empowered and less alone for data analysis. And I wanted all researchers to feel like this too, and to pass forward what I've learned. So that's why I developed the OpenScapes Champions program. OpenScapes Champions is an open data science mentorship program for research teams. We support researchers to reimagine data analysis and stewardship as a collaborative effort. We help them develop modern skills that are of immediate value to them, including technical, collaborative, and leadership skills. And we help cultivate collaborative and inclusive research communities as part of the bigger open science movement. A big part of this is welcoming researchers to the open science landscape and strengthening team culture. Through the Champions Program, we help researchers move from, the, from being the sad and lonely researchers in the bottom left of this illustration to finding and feeling like part of a team as they explore and navigate these pathways together. And as they gain skills and confidence working together, they become champions and stewards of the open science landscape too. So feeling included in open science is a big part of OpenScapes. And another part is helping teams see open science and data science as part of their daily workflow. This means recognizing and expecting that tooling and practices already exist and are available to them as, as they make their analytical life more efficient and resilient and also enjoyable. Through the Champions Program, we've been working with a lot of awesome groups like NASA and NOAA, who book the Champions Program for teams within their research communities, as well as awesome groups like Mozilla and the Moore Foundation, who've sponsored the Champions Program so that teams from across different research fields can participate together. And there's so much exciting momentum so far. I love this tweet from Malin Pensky, who says that a colleague just reanalyzed the genomic, the genomic data that they had published, and that that open data had helped that other research team in their research. It's so exciting to see people like Malin, who's a marine ecologist studying the impacts of climate change, become a champion in the open science movement. And I also wanted to share some personal perspective on OpenScapes. I was a champion in the first OpenScapes cohort back in 2019 with my co-teacher, Dr. Jessica Couture. 
And some major changes that we made to our materials and mindsets during OpenScapes were one, that together we learned and practiced skills to make our curriculum development, sharing, and review process more streamlined and efficient. So while it was an initial investment, it saved us a ton of time in the long term. Two is that based on what we've learned and implemented, I became more confident to modernize my courses to better reflect what environmental data science looks like in the real world today, which is collaborative, more open, and with open source tools that streamline reproducible team science and communication. And three, and the one that I think is most important, is that because of the supportive network, feedback, and skills that I gained in OpenScapes, I felt braver sharing open educational resources that I created. That had seemed really scary before, but is now just built into how I work. And in addition to the growth that I've experienced personally, one of the coolest things about participating in OpenScapes is that I get to see those skills and mindsets I've learned transferred to the students that I teach. Here's part of an email I recently received from two students sharing that as interns, they were able to together introduce their supervisor to GitHub and found that a super empowering experience. What I love about this is that it breaks down the hierarchy of who can be considered a teacher. Even interns can be Yodas. And part of encouraging learners to become leaders means intentionally welcoming them into supportive communities. And that doesn't just happen by accident. This illustration is one of the first that I shared on Twitter. It is two little monsters staring at this open door with many groups welcoming them in. And a little known fact is that these monsters are actually Julie on the left, giving me on the right a gentle nudge to step, step into the welcoming world of R and open data science communities. What happened with the support and kindness of those communities and people and groups is that illustrations I had scribbled privately for myself have now become an online published library of data science illustrations that are used around the world. I also met many amazing collaborators who I never would have met without being welcome to join these communities. For example, my Palmer Penguins power team of Allison Hill at our studio and Kristen Gorman at the University of Alaska. Something that has really crystallized for me through all of this is really how open science is a movement. Open science is about empathy and inclusion and kindness with deliberateness and intention like Allison has been describing. And open science is also about new ways of contributing to science through the open web that just weren't possible before. So along with the traditional science contributions like publications and data and code, Art is an increasingly embraced non-traditional contribution to science that also has the added benefit of making science more welcoming. So this, this illustration is actually from a collaboration with Allison that we call the Tidy Data Illustrated Series. And the idea was that we wanted to welcome people to the concept of tidy data independent from coding. So in this series, we focus on how tidy data is powerful in terms of reproducibility, efficiency, and collaboration. And one of the key concepts from this series is that tidy data lets you spend less time reinventing like this frustrated monster on the left and more time iterating and actually doing your science like the monster on the right who is leveraging existing tools. And Allison and I came up with this series during hikes where we would talk about what we could do with tidy data to make it more welcoming as a concept when we teach. This was my first sketch that came out of these conversations, and it is obviously imperfect and thankfully nothing at all like the ultimate thing, but it helped us kind of think things through. <laughs> I love this sketch so much. Um, and well, yes, uh, from this starting point, the Tidy Data series underwent a lot of changes and fine tuning. Julie's sketches are absolutely critical to our process because they give us a real starting point to build from. And seeing Julie's doodles for new art ideas is incredibly valuable and exciting and really is one of my favorite parts of our co-creating process. This champion's landscape is a great example of co-creating artwork as a team. Um, Allison and I started working on this with Aaron Robinson when Aaron joined OpenScapes as co-director last year. 
working with Allison through art helped Aaron and me reflect and clarify how we were thinking about the Champions Program as we'd refined our shared vision for OpenScapes more broadly. And we thought it would be fun here to share a sneak peek of what this process looked like. So Pathways is something that we talk about in the Champions Program. And so it made sense to start with an open landscape and Pathways. And the first sketches that we did reflect this open landscapes with pathways throughout it, with hints of data appearing on the far horizon. And as these sketches evolved, they allowed us to fill out the landscape and start thinking more deeply about the winding pathways within it. For example, we brainstormed how there should be many different routes and trail lengths throughout this landscape, since there's never one right way for teams to start working more collaboratively or reproducibly. But while the landscape and pathways are really important as background, they're actually not the focus of OpenScapes. The focus of OpenScapes is on meeting researchers where they are and providing welcoming entryways from whatever their trailhead looks like into whatever landscape they need to navigate. It's been so exciting as this landscape began to take shape through our discussions with Allison and her incredible talent. Um, different iterations helped us refine what we wanted to prioritize and emphasize when we talk about OpenScapes. Allison would work offline and share iterations with us, and then we would meet together to discuss. This was one of our work sessions after Allison had introduced the researchers interacting in the landscape. One of the things that we wanted to illustrate in addition to the trailhead was that researchers do become part of the landscape and help each other navigate obstacles and troubleshoot. And working with Allison is so awesome. <laughs> she would do mock-ups and take notes live while we brainstormed so that we could iterate in real time. This is when we were discussing how to represent teams in a way so that they could be easily identified as a unit but also still represent the diversity in their backgrounds and skill sets. And we also wanted to illustrate that there are established paths created by the open community that we can help researchers safely navigate. And this will minimize lost time and also unnecessary trampling. <laughs> we also wanted to illustrate though, that there's additional path building. We can build new paths when there are identified needs. And so examples of this kind of trail building that we do with OpenScapes is our R for Excel users workshop, as well as our work with Tara Robertson to promote more diversity, equity, and inclusion in open science. And as we iterated, Aaron and I started sharing this illustration pretty early in talks um, so that we could practice how it felt to describe the Champions Program this way and to get feedback. And one addition that came through this kind of feedback is the hermit crab, who is just above the sad Luke Skywalker animals on the left there. The idea is that sometimes, like this hermit crab, you are just coding along on your own, maybe in the R console, with a workflow that you established years ago. And you might suspect there is a better way, but you don't know what to do, and so you're just doing your thing. So you might not have rain clouds like the sad bunny and the skunk, but you could still benefit from friendly onboarding to community tooling and practices that would ultimately let you spend less time reinventing and more time doing your science. And that gets us to this current version of the landscape that Julie and Aaron have on the OpenScapes website. It's a landscape that contains a bunch of different paths, teams, and welcoming helpers to assist them as they navigate towards their open science goals. But this won't be the last illustration iteration <laughs> of this illustration. As Julie and Aaron continue refining how they think and talk about OpenScapes, this landscape will be updated to reflect their learning and changing vision. Some closing thoughts are that open science fuels opportunity for inclusion and new ideas. This is because sharing imperfect work, whether it's, uh, <clears throat> whether it's art or code, enables more innovation and less reinventing as we learn together. And importantly, collaboration requires trust and safety. This is a critical part of how open science can, can promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. And also being finished is not an end goal with open science. And there's never a final, final, final version. 
This commitment to seeing everything as a work in progress that holds opportunities for growth, improvement, and innovation is part of the OpenScape's ethos and makes it such an impactful and an exciting contribution to the open science movement. Thank you all so much for the opportunity to share our story. And thank you to all of our collaborators and teams and funders. We are so excited for the rest of Cascadia R 2021. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We will move on to the next session.